Good morning and uh, welcome once again. Uh, we're continuing to look at the Psalms this morning and with, uh, we're looking at one of my favourite kinds of Psalm and that's a Psalm that relates to a very specific event in the Bible. It has a kind of real backstory that you can check out and see you know, what was really happening when the Psalm was written. Uh, and this Psalm was written at a time, uh, probably it was written by David and possibly at the lowest point in David's life. Uh, you can check out the story, it's in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. Or you might want to check out the film, the 1951 film, uh, David and Bathsheba, because this, these are the events around which this psalm was written. The story really starts with David making one poor decision that leads to more poor decisions, getting worse and worse. Uh, he commits adultery uh, with the, uh, uh, another man's wife. Uh, she becomes pregnant, he tries to cover his tracks, fails miserably, and this results in one of his faithful soldiers being sent back to the front line of battle with instructions to his, uh, uh, the leader of his army to make sure this man does not return alive. And so Uriah the Hittite, this faithful soldier of David, is killed in battle with a number of his comrades, and it seems that David has got away with it. But sometime later, Nathan the prophet confronts David with the truth, the reality of what he has done. And he, he makes it very clear, God is not pleased, God is not happy with what he's done. He will spare David's life, but there will be consequences. David, it seems, uh, realises the full horror of what he has done. Though perhaps remembering how Saul had finished his reign far from God, having turned away from God in a season of disobedience, he does not want the same thing to happen to him. And so he gets on his face before the living God, and this is his prayer. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb you taught me wisdom in that secret place cleanse me with hyssop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow let me hear joy and gladness let the bones you have crushed rejoice hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity create in me a pure heart o god and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my saviour, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of, right, of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole then bulls will be offered on your altar. Thank you very much, Joe. Beautifully read. Uh, I want to look this morning at three uh, things that I believe we can learn from this prayer of David today. First of all, though, perhaps a confession on my part. Uh, as I uh, was preparing this talk, as I was looking at this on Friday morning, I began to uh, think about it and felt that my own heart actually had become quite cold and quite hard and a little careless. Uh, and uh, as I was looking at the passage, I realised I wasn't really finding it very inspiring uh, and wasn't looking forward to preparing the talk on it. Uh, and then I realised that this psalm, this prayer of David, needed in some way to be my prayer too. 
that in some ways I needed to get inside this psalm, that I needed to own it uh, and make it my own. I may not have committed the kind of crimes and terrible things that David had done, but David's problem began with a, with a hard heart, a cold heart, and I could sense that my heart was heading in the same direction. And so if David, if for David, if this psalm kind of charted his route back to the presence of God, having done such really terrible things, then could this, this, this psalm not help me to sort of uh, navigate my way back to uh, um, uh, a warm heart uh, and uh, a closer relationship with the living God? I've come to realise over the years that this book increasingly needs to become my book. This Bible, this precious word of God needs to become mine in a sense. That it was never meant to be a book that we kind of beat other people over the head with, but a book that I need to measure my life against, that uh, I need to own for myself. So let's look at this prayer and see how we can learn uh, from it and, uh, and make it our own this morning. The three things I want to particularly look at today are firstly that David moved towards God and not away from him. Secondly, that David recognised that above all else he had sinned against God himself. And thirdly, that David's way forward wasn't by kind of trying to do something to make it up to God, it was about a changed heart. So let's look at the first of these three things. David must have feared that heaven would be closed to him from now on. He had seen King Saul, his predecessor, uh, fall away from God uh, when Samuel had rebuked him for his disobedience and uh, David didn't want to go the same way. David knew that God was holy and righteous you didn't mess with the living God. But he also knew that God was completely reliable and faithful in love. That somehow, no matter what David had done, God would always love him. He knew he was a compassionate God. He'd seen through the, the, the kind of history of his people how God had been patient uh, beyond any reasonable uh, measure of patience, beyond any kind of human breaking point, God had remained diligently patient with his people. He had still loved them despite their rebellion uh, and uh, their sinning against him. He had disciplined them, he had trained them and he had provided for them. And so David begins his prayer with a, with a, a, a cry for mercy. Have mercy on me, O God according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. When we fall, we have an even better reason to approach God with confidence. Jesus, his son, has died on the cross for us, not only demonstrating the full measure of his love for us, but taking our place, taking the punishment that was due to us upon himself so that we could be completely forgiven. This means that there is no doubt uh, that, we, that uh, we should kind of, that God would not welcome us back. There is no doubt that uh, when we're found out, when we are undone, when we become cold and careless, that we can actually run towards the living God. In the workplace, some managers operate what's known as an open door policy, uh, meaning that any of their team can uh, at any time go into their office uh, and uh, seek advice, uh, share issues or concerns with that manager. Because of what Jesus has done for us, heaven now operates an open door policy to us. Jesus is our open door. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. We return to him with confidence because he has paid the price and opened the way. Secondly, David recognised that ultimately, although soldiers had lost their lives and other people had been badly affected by what he had done, that there was damage on the human level that actually, primarily, he had sinned against God himself. I think this is really important for us to realise that when we do wrong, actually it is against God that we're doing wrong. Not necessarily, not just against other people or against ourselves. God made me. I'm part of his creation. That it all belongs to him. 
He created me in love and for love. And he created you and he created everyone for the same purpose, in love and for love. He created us for loving and caring for and protecting and providing for one another. So when I do damage to you, when I do damage to somebody else, I'm doing damage to God. That's the truth of it. Jesus talks in the New Testament, uh, in um, uh, the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 25. He talks about the times when uh, he was hungry and was given something to eat. When he was naked and somebody clothed him. When he was in prison and someone visited him. And the people listening to Jesus said. Yeah but when, when were you hungry and we, and we gave you food? When, when were you naked and we clothed you? When you, were you in prison and we visited you? And Jesus says whenever you did this. This is in Matthew 25 verse 40. Truly I tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine. You did it for me. And so when we bless one another we're blessing Jesus. But when we do wrong against one another, we're doing wrong against Jesus. And David saw this. He saw that the wrong he had done was first and foremost against the living God himself. And that was incredibly serious. Thirdly then, David saw that the way back to God and the way to walk with God again was by tending to the condition of his heart. The temptation when we've done something wrong is to think that we've got to do something. We've got to make it up to God. We've got to try a little bit harder. Uh, we, we need to make you know, compensation for God. But there is nothing we can do to add to the work of Jesus. And in truth, David saw this. He saw that uh, um, he could offer sacrifices. He could offer bulls. I mean, he was the king. He could offer as many bulls and goats and doves, or whatever was required. He could go to the temple and offer all these things. But what God was really looking for was the heart behind the sacrifice. The sacrifice meant nothing if they was just doing it to try and kind of appease the living God. What mattered was the condition of David's heart first and foremost. The real sacrifice we read in verse 17, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. The amazing truth for us today is that we have not only received forgiveness through what Jesus did on the cross for us, uh, but we have received the Holy Spirit who helps us with the condition of our hearts. The Bible talks in the Old Testament about a heart of stone being replaced with a heart of flesh, a living heart. And this is the heart the Holy Spirit helps us to grow within. If you're struggling in your walk with God right now and uh, you've become aware that perhaps you've let God down, uh, that your heart perhaps has become cold and hard, that you've drifted away from him, that you've become a bit careless. It always worries me if I have this sense of just being a little bit careless in my walk with God. Then make this psalm your prayer today. The door of heaven is open to you because of what Jesus did on the cross. Recognise that ultimately where you have hurt others or let them down, you've actually hurt Jesus. You've hurt God himself. And this makes it all the more important that we do confess and turn away from these things that we see how seriously God takes it when we offend one another and uh, do damage against one another. David prayed a beautiful prayer in this psalm. He prayed, create in me a clean heart. This is the precious and wonderful work of the Holy Spirit to do a work within our hearts, if we will allow him, if we will ask him, if we will welcome him in afresh into our hearts. So let's just pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your death on the cross for us. Thank you that heaven is open to us today because of what you have done. Thank you that we can run into your presence today, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we can add nothing to what you have done to, uh, to bring us this precious gift of forgiveness and salvation, that we can be one with you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you afresh, day by day by day, just continue this work of creating this beautiful, clean heart within us, this heart that is soft, this heart that is on fire, as Joe often talks about. Lord Jesus, we pray, let our hearts be soft this morning as we come to you. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.